many parts of the world, signalized intersection is the golden standard of intersection design. Its concept is so easy that even a child can understand it. Red means stop, green means go. Its simple and intuitive design ensure the smooth flow of traffic around the globe. However, this design is not without flaw. Recently, many municipal governments in Canada are looking to the other side of the pond for a different kind of intersection design, the roundabout. It allows for uninterrupted flow of traffic in an intersection. It also reduces the amount of time wasted waiting for a red light. And it also works under extreme weather conditions with no need for electricity. However, despite these benefits, is the roundabout a direct upgrade to the traditional signalized intersection? Anyone who has ever driven a car before knows how annoying it is to wait at a red light for what seems like an eternity. And idling at a red light is not only wasting precious time, it is also horrible for the environment as well. According to Natural Resources Canada, one vehicle idling over 5 minutes produces around 300 grams of CO2. Of course, a red light rarely lasts that long, but when you're considering that there are often multiple cars waiting at the same time, the CO2 emission adds up quickly. Runabouts, on the other hand, is able to reduce idling time by allowing a continuous flow of traffic through the intersection, thereby reducing the amount of pollution created by the motorists. However, reducing pollution and idling time are not the only upsides to a runabout. Their traffic capacity is also remarkable as well. You might think that, due to runabout's unique design, they will not be able to handle the same amount of traffic as signalized intersections. But as it turns out, as long as they are properly designed, runabouts are able to handle an extremely high volume of traffic. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, a four-lane runabout is able to handle around 60,000 daily service volumes. To give you some perspective on that number, a typical downtown intersection connecting two arterial roads in Ottawa has a daily service volume of around 25,000 cars. So, a properly designed runabout should be able to handle the traffic volume in any typical city. Not only roundabouts are able to handle a large amount of traffic, they're also great for motorist safety. For motorists, left-hand turns are often notorious. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Commission, they are two times more likely to get you in an accident than a right-hand turn. In contrast, roundabouts eliminate this problem completely. In a roundabout, whether you want to go straight, to turn left, to turn right, or even do a U-turn, it's all the same. It significantly reduces the risks and possible locations of accidents when turning. It also drastically reduces the vehicle speed and prevents accidents caused by human factors such as running a red light or speeding. In all honesty, runabouts are great for vehicular traffic. And if a city is thinking of putting a runabout in a location where vehicle volume, reduced idling time, and motorist safety are the only metrics of consideration, then runabouts are most certainly the way to go. However, with the popularization of active transits, the city also has to take into consideration the needs of pedestrians, especially those with disabilities or handicaps. For pedestrians, signalized intersections can be pretty safe, as long as everyone follows the traffic signals. But the unfortunate reality is that, due to human factors and traffic volumes, pedestrians are often the most vulnerable group at any intersection. Many government agencies, such as the US Department of Transportation and the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario, considers runabouts to be a viable design alternative to the traditional signalized intersection to provide better pedestrian safety. But the truth is more complicated than that. A runabout provides better pedestrian safety by having a lower speed limit than its surrounding roads. 
meaning that drivers often have to slow down to enter the roundabout and speed up to exit it. Due to this fact, vehicles are more likely to yield to pedestrians when they are entering the roundabout, but are less likely to do so when they exit it. And due to the lack of traffic signals, pedestrians have to rely on the action of motorists to safely cross the road. This becomes especially problematic on roundabouts with high traffic volume, as vehicles are supposed to flow continuously and often cannot stop to let a pedestrian through without risking a rear collision. This also raises huge accessibility issues for the visually impaired. Modern signalized intersection designs often include accessibility features such as audible pedestrian signals that signalizes a green light, allowing the visually impaired to cross. On a roundabout, the visually impaired must rely on the sound of traffic and the mercy of the motorists to properly cross the road. And on a busy intersection, it is possible that there will always be a few cars circling the roundabout, making it extremely difficult for the visually impaired to cross. One possible solution to all of these problems is to install pedestrian signals, which acts like traffic lights for cars but provides a safe crossing for pedestrians. However, doing so is counterintuitive as the main goal of a roundabout is to allow for uninterrupted traffic. A roundabout might not be a good idea where there are heavy pedestrian volume, even when it is objectively better for motorists. When constructing new intersections, pedestrians and motorists should not be the only things on a municipal government's mind. Cost and land use are also important factors to consider. In Ottawa, a brand new four-way intersection costs around $1.5 million to construct. And the main cost does not lie in the asphalt or the pavement itself. A considerable amount of money is spent on the traffic signal control system. Modern signal control systems are sophisticated computers and sensors that ensure the smoothest and safest flow of traffic possible. A roundabout, on the other hand, is able to achieve high traffic flow without the use of these sophisticated equipments. Although they might take more material to construct, the cost is quickly offset by the lack of signal control system. But this lowered cost comes at a price. Runabouts uses considerable more land than the traditional signalized intersection. And in most western nations, land is a precious commodity in downtown areas. And roundabouts might not be the best idea if the city only has a limited amount of space to work with. So, roundabouts versus signalized intersections. Which one is the better intersection design? Well, that depends on who you ask and what the exact situation is. The truth is, despite their many advantages, the roundabout also comes with a handful of downsides, and the traditional signalized intersection certainly still has its use. Whether it is better to use a roundabout or a regular intersection should be determined on a case-by-case -case basis, and municipal governments certainly should not rush to construct them without careful planning and considerations for all parties involved. Hey folks, I hope that you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like if you wish, and as always, this is the Transportation Channel, and I hope to see you on the next one.